What is up? Welcome to another Thursday Night Grind. Today is July 9th, 2020, and we are on episode 28 of the Thursday Night Grind, where every Thursday night I go onto YouTube and I sharpen something on the bench at the American Edge, which you can learn more about at AmericanEdgeSharpening.com. Today, we're going to be doing it a little bit differently, and then I'm actually going to do a little bit of editing because I'm getting into something that uh, I don't, I've never done before, and I just want the opportunity to not spend a lot of time monkeying around with it with you, but at the same time, let you see how I'm gonna work through this. You ever seen these before? Check that out. All right, I'm gonna tell you what they are after one thing here. If you know what they are, make sure you let me know in the comments right now. Okay, before I dive into doing these, I do want to do the shameless plug for the Guild of Professional Sharpeners. And I want to tell you some highlights of what's going on over there this week. Uh, we had a discussion about reprofiling. John has, uh, he, he did two knives, reprofile them. There's a few ways to do that. That includes um, what reprofiling is. In this case, what we're talking about includes cutting new bevels and repairing tips. And uh, there's a few ways to do that, and we keep learning about it. We also talked a little bit about chisels. Chisels is a big topic, and I made the comment that it warrants, if not a monthly theme, at least uh, woodworking tools absolutely warrants a monthly theme. I wrote an article on restaurant sharpening. It took me a long time to figure out how restaurants work, right? Like that business-to-business -business model, uh, and I think I've got it close to understood, so I shared all of that in an article on the Guild. Uh, we talked about how each of us plan and organize and goal set, and you know, I love this idea of incremental small wins, like just stacking up small wins, like doing one thing every day, and it can be something as silly as sending out an email or just doing one thing every day, and what I noticed when I was doing the um, uh, now I forget the name of it. What was it? The Best Self Journal, which I don't do currently, but I still really like it. I've actually taken some lessons from that and moved it into a rocket book. But what I learned doing that was just how much difference doing one small thing a day can add up to. And uh, like you're looking at it, you know. And lastly, the, the, I did a, I love that interview with uh, WorkSharp. Those guys are awesome. And uh, I posted a video on my channel of the, the top three takeaways uh, from that conversation with, uh, with WorkSharp. So make sure, I'll, I'll try to remember to leave a link to it right in the description below here. But if you just go to my Kick My Name and channel, you'll see it. So that's that. Okay, so without further ado, let's talk about these. Have you guys figured out what these are yet? I had to ask. So this is a customer who I've done some work for in the past. Really cool person. She let me put um, uh, my cards up in her establishment. She is a, a fabric designer. And uh, so I've, I felt, felt comfortable reaching out to her like, what are these things? All right, I'm going to tell you, these are buttonhole scissors. You know, like where you have like a button up shirt and on one side is a button on the other side is a hole. Well, that's how you make the hole. But here's the thing, there's a lot going on with them and like they're, they're, they're catching right here. Like you can do a little side pressure to get them to go. They're not cutting anything. I uh, just like have a, a rag here. Like I tried it before the video and like they wouldn't even, again, you gotta get your side pressure right. Yeah, but even, oh, it almost cut. Okay, yeah, I cut a little bit. All right, cut that barely but uh, definitely room for improvement there. I've also noticed that the screw has been worked. Let's see if we can get, get in on, there it is. I've noticed that that screw has been worked. So I have not attempted to do anything to it yet, uh, but that's why I'm doing an edited video. Also, for those of you who know more than me, what's going on with this? This little screw here. It screws pretty easy one way and it looks like it's gonna pull a pin all the way out uh, and then it stops going the other way. I haven't figured it out. I mean, I could guess, but I don't know, man. So if you know, could you let me know? Could you just put a comment in the, down there? That screw thumb thingy is for, thank you. I suppose I could ask the internet too. I haven't looked it up yet. 
So anyway, okay, so now let's go to the bench and uh, see if we can get these apart and then clean them up, sharpen them, put them back together, see if we can set it so that they close just right. You ready? Let's do it. Okay, so here we are on the bench. I have uh, my scissors, a screwdriver, and a magnetic tray. So this, uh, since it's been worked, the way I'm gonna do this is probably lean into it. Mm, go any easy, man. Like, we'll see. Mm. Right? Like, this is hard. That's why, uh... What I've seen happen before is uh, this, this screw comes through, but then it's peened over on this side to lock the tension. I, have, I wasn't expecting that because these are German. You see that? Helmany. Like generally that's high quality. That screw should be adjustable and it might be. I'm going to keep trying. I had to lean into it, but I got it. It's spinning. Ooh, keep watch what you're doing. All right, now I wanted to do, you could get away with not doing that, right? But I wanted to get it moving because I want to set the tension. I feel like that's an issue with these. You'll also see like these, they need to be cleaned, right? That's, uh, that can be improved. So we can improve these. Uh, let's do that. Uh, first thing on the, there's a spot here too. I wanna see if I can get that spot out. Let's go to the wire wheel. So here we are over at the twice as sharp. I'm using, I have a clamp here with a skinny of ice here. So I'm going to use that one. I'm doing the old paint the bevel trick on the scissor. And I'm going to set my angle on the twice as sharp. And I'm going to sight it in first. Believe it or not, it seems that I have nailed it and it's at a 25. So this is a very small, very small scissor. So I, but it's also still really beat up. So I was considering just using the honing wheel, but I'm going to take a, pa a light pass or two on the cutting wheel. I like to, just double check, that looks real good. Tighten my clamp up a little bit. Use my finger to support. It's not grabbing that real well. It's cutting nice, angle looks good. And this is, yeah. All right, and I have a burr. Okay, I just went to get my Edge Pro 60 grit stone. It wasn't very wet. Uh, so you could, this is, there's a lot of ways to do this, right? And I was just thinking through the way I wanted to do it this time. I wanna see how that works. Okay, and that took the burr off. All right, so let's go back in here and we go here, go back to the wheel. Mm. 
All right, that's it. I'm gonna put a burr up. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Actually, I want to. Uh, I'm gonna pull that burr, cut that burr off. A lot of times, what you'll do with this is put your scissors back together and then use them to cut the burr off. In this case, I'm gonna do it on the stone. Okay, that was enough to remove that burr. Hooking it back up here. Go back up to this one. Sorry, got to burr the whole way here. This stone's pretty dry. Let's remove that burr. If I can get this all in one shot. Okay. Back up here. Okay. All right, super. Oh, you didn't see it. All right, so I just uh, got my 600 stone. Sorry about that, and uh, cut the burr off of that. So now, these are ready to go back together. Let's go to the other bench to do that. Okay, back at the bench here. Let's uh, just wipe, make sure we wipe these off nice. And wipe you off nice. I'm going to use this Wolf Industries Scissor Lubricant. Forgive the glare, but it allows me to see what I'm doing. This is a wax-based thing, it's a little shake, like it goes on wet but dries dry. Not like a, an oil that stays. And, um... Okay, the other thing is I didn't really inspect this. Just looking close at it here. I'm actually gonna see if I can hit that with a wire brush. All right, so I got my, my needle nose here so I'm not brushing my fingers. Try to avoid brushing it away and then losing it under the bench. But at the same time, take a few minutes just to try to clean it up. Brush my fingers anyway. All right. I'm just looking close at it. Doesn't look too beat up. Move you guys out of the way. Bring you here. I'm gonna put a little lube in there just to see if I can facilitate going back together. Then I'm doing this to kind of just keep those threads nice and clean, right? And then the tension starts picking up. Ooh, careful. Yeah, so that's a good question. If that's tight enough, will it line up right? So now it's at the point where I gotta start leaning into it, otherwise I'm gonna strip it. So it's like Mmm, doesn't want to get much tighter than that. There 
All right, that's kind of tough, man. Kind of tough. Let's just see what this looks like in some fabric. See if that cuts a little better now than it did. Nope. Yep. So it's a matter of getting them to meet and then, so it's like it requires a little bit of, it would be nice to get those tighter. Right, still pretty sloppy. All right, let me try to work on that. All right, sadly, I'm running out of options there. It's just, if the tighter I go, the more it wants to strip and like I'm just beating myself up on that. So that might be kind of as good as I'm gonna be able to get these. Right, like they'll, they'll go in and cut a buttonhole. That's fine. But it, I guess it would take a little bit of practice to get them. You gotta get the, a little bit of side pressure so that they, yeah, like, I don't know, like I guess now that I'm take, doing a few, like practice the side pressure, right? Like it works pretty well. Anyway, I've never seen these before. I thought that was pretty cool. Buttonhole scissors. One thing that I love about sharpening is that there's just so much. And like, it used to frustrate me that, you know, when you get started, like I started doing kitchen knobs and people would be like, hey, that's cool. Like, but do you sharpen buttonhole scissors? <laughs> I, I don't know, like, I never know. But like, I guess I've grown to the point where like, let me take a look, you know, let me see if there's a way. And I'll, I'll let her know, like, the, it, I couldn't set the tension any different, but uh, they are definitely sharper and they will cut fabric. It just requires a little bit of, of hand practice. So anyway, there's a no shortage of opportunity in this space, like I've mentioned time and time again. If it's something you wanna get into, make sure you check out guildofsharpeners.org because that is where I am growing a community of people who are learning to sharpen and then to use that skill to start and run a business, which is just phenomenal. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun and I hope to see you in there. Make sure you subscribe and like and hit the bell because there's always good stuff coming out over here. And thanks for watching. Hey, before you go, let me know what you think about this format, the one where I'm not doing just like straight up start to finish but where I'm doing a, just a minimal amount of editing to get the process going a little smoother. Let me know in the comments. Thanks.